Welcome to ECCB Connects. We've all heard the saying that it's important to save for rainy days. In this episode, CEO of the Eastern Caribbean Securities Exchange, Trevor Blake, provides some expert advice on how to plan and be prepared for these rainy days. Stay with us. We'll share more with you after the break. Season 14 of ECCB Connects is almost at its end. The final episode of this season will be released on November 25th. Join us in January 2021 for new and exciting programs about who we are, what we do, and how we serve you. During the break, be sure to stay connected with us on social media at ECCB Connects. Budgeting, saving, and spending wisely are building blocks of good money management. They allow you to plan how to spend your income and track where your money is going. Trevor Blake shares some steps that you can take to manage your money in challenging times. So firstly, to start off in terms of budgeting, you have to first determine your priorities. What, 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 are you, what do you want? What are your goals? Um, how are you going to organize yourselves to, to achieve those priorities? You look at your income. Look at all your sources of income. Pull them together uh, uh, so that you know exactly what you have available to you to spend. Then you have to look at your, your expenses. What am I spending my monies on? What are these things that are uh, taking up my resources? How am I spending my money? And you have to, 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 to categorize your income in terms of your expen categorize your expenditures in terms of your fixed expenses. What are the things that I must spend on? What are the things that, uh, that are fixed? Your mortgage, your rents, your loan payments, and things like that. Look at those things and categorize them as fixed expenses, those that you have to meet uh, it, in, in any period. And then you look at the other areas of expenditure your discretionary expenses. How, how am I spending the remainder of my money? If at, the, if at the end of a period, a month, a week, what have you, I have $100, I have my fixed expenses are 60, what happens to that other 40? What am I doing with that $40? How am I spending it? How much of it is discretionary? How much, how much of it is necessary? How much of it is spent on things that that I could do without? How much of it should I be directing to more important uh, uh, um, uh, processes? And then you have to make a plan. And having made the plan, you need to stick to it. It is important for the entire family to be involved in this. Everybody who's involved in the household should be involved in the, in the budgeting. And I know sometimes we don't like to involve our kids in money matters. Sometimes we want to shield them from these things. But it is important we bring everybody together. At least everybody who's spending any of the, 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 the family's resources or anybody who is able to make a claim on those resources. It's important to have that discussion with your kids so that they know what they could reasonably ask for. They know what is just with, outside of the means of the family budget. It's important that they are involved in the process and they know exactly what these expenses are and uh, how much income is available to meet the, these expenses. In your budgeting, you have to prepare for emergencies. Um, things are going to come up. Uh, from time to time, you will need to, to make fairly large expenditures that you may not have, have anticipated. Someone may get sick, and depending, and even if you do have insurance, sometimes the, the, the expenses associated with that illness uh, could, be, could, could exceed what your insurance would cover. So you have to make allowances for these things. Your, your, your car might need a tire or a battery, something that you didn't plan for. So these types of emergencies you have to build in in terms of your budget. And you have to be disciplined about, about your expenditures. Um, when, once you set up that budget, it's important that you stick to it and you're building the discipline to ensure that that budget could, could be maintained. The uncertainty has led my family and I to adjust the expense side of our budget. By incorporating a few cost-cutting measures, such as 
curtailing our overall spending, especially in regards to online ordering and spending, cooking most of our meals rather than eating out, walking rather than driving for short distances. As a result, we have been able to increase the amount being saved monthly to mitigate against this future uncertainty. If we were to go on now to, to savings, which is the first thing in, in, in this, well, the second item in terms of your money management. You have to pay yourself first. Sometimes we get into the habit of spending and then what is left back, we try to save. That is not a very realistic way of setting about savings. I think you have to determine upfront some goals and these goals have to be realistic. A good rule of thumb is about 10 to 15% of your income should be saved. So if you make $100 a month, you should try to save at least 10% of that. $15, 15 15% is even better. But try at least to get to 10% to, to of your income. And you should do that up front. Don't wait until you've spent on everything else to save. Save first, and then, and then uh, you, you take, undertake the other other expenditures. As the saying goes, you pay yourself first. You need to save to have a good cushion to, to protect you in the, in the rainy day. So um, a rule of thumb is about four to six months of expenses. You'd want to have a cushion that could keep you going, say, in over four or six months if your income is, is in any way affected. For example, those persons who are in the the tourism sector right now in, the, in, the, in this pandemic. Um, for some, the incomes may have been totally, totally dried up. Uh, if you're in a taxi driver, tour operator, and things like that. Tourists aren't coming, or borders are closed. So uh, the, your, your income would be, would be you know, uh, completely, um, re completely eliminated if, if, if you are in those sectors. So you would have ne needed to have some, some cushion to take you through this, these rainy days. Um, and four to six months of expenses is what is, is normal, although in this current pandemic, we see our borders have been closed for more than six months now. So even if you had four to six months of expenses, um, that would not have been enough to keep you going. So while, while we have these rule of thumbs, or rules of thumb, um, you want to be able to save as much as you could so that you could be prepared for, for any eventuality. Again, in, in savings, don't think that you could save in a, in a current account or you save in cash. Get a bank account, a bank or credit union account. Ha make sure your savings is placed in an interest-bearing savings account or in a certificate of deposit, a fixed deposit, something like that where it could be maintained uh, safely and the value reasonably well maintained. Of course, um, if sometimes uh, if we put our monies in accounts that don't give us more than the rate of inflation, we could have what you call this, this savings happening. But uh, in, the, in, in the normal course of, of things and with, at, at the levels of inflation that we face in this currency union, uh, putting your funds in an interest-bearing bank account, we are uh, the, the central bank mandates that they pay you at least 2%, you should have a reasonable uh, cushion against, against, against uh, inflation. So important that you, you save regularly, you save every single pay period, and you save between 10 or 15% of your income. You build up to about four to six months of expenses and continue building. When, once you get there, the idea is not to start spending willy-nilly. The idea is to move on to something else, a higher order level of savings. And I posit you should be looking at investment at this time. The COVID-19 pandemic forced me and my family to rethink how we spend and what we spend now. Initially, when Dominica was shut down, it kind of assisted in helping to budget properly because we were inside. Among that would have been spent on social activities. I didn't have to spend. And um, when the country was reopened, I realized that 
I didn't need to have those expenses and so I did cut back. Also, um, because of the fact that the tourism industry was pretty much shut down, income was less. So the focus shifted not just on taking care of expenses but actually putting food on the table. So I needed to be more strict in terms of budgeting. So the, the pandemic actually helped me and my family in terms of ensuring that we practice proper budgeting and financing. Let's move on to spending. And uh, that is extremely important because this is where things go wrong. But this is the thing you have more control over than any other element of the money management process, your spending. You have to be prudent. You have to review your, all of your expenditures. Look at everything you spend money on and see where can I reduce, where can I minimize this, especially on the discretionary spending, so that you have more funds available to, for you to look at investing, savings and investing. So having covered your necessaries, the things that you must do, your rents or mortgages, your car payments, your, all the other loan payments, etc., look at how could you reduce the discretionary spending. And those persons are, are current, well, all of us in these, in these, um, in these challenging uh, economic times have to look carefully on where we spend our monies. Look at what we do with our money. Look at how we could minimize the discretionary spending, how we could spend more, 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 more smartly. For example, making the right choices when we go to the groceries. We must buy food. But look at the things that we, we are buying. Look at uh, uh, you know, uh, finding ways of being more economical and trying to keep more of our monies in our pockets rather than, than spending it. Season 14 of ECCB Connects is almost at its end. The final episode of this season will be released on November 25th. Join us in January 2021 for new and exciting programs about who we are, what we do, and how we serve you. During the break, be sure to stay connected with us on social media at ECCB Connects. You're watching ECCB Connects. To view any episode of ECCB Connects anytime, any place at your convenience, check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn at ECCB Connects. And now for this week's financial tip. Understand the difference between niceties and necessities and focus on your needs rather than your wants. Be willing to forego the things you really don't need. We've come to the end of another episode of ECCB Connects. Thanks for watching and be sure to join us next week for the final episode of season 14.